is Andy Tube. This video, I'm going to show you the recommended places to put oil and grease on this Singer Model 466, uh, recommended by the Singer manuals. And I, I got a little change about that, and maybe a spot or two that they don't mention that I think it's worthwhile to put a little oil. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that's the purpose of this video. I get a lot of requests for this from every model I've ever done on my channel. So, I just thought I would do this and get it out there. And, uh, as always, you can skip to chapters you're interested in um, by... Uh, scanning along the timeline at the bottom of the video and in the description below the video I'll put uh, links to some of the grease and oil that I use in case you are interested in that okay and I'll be showing you just a very few supplies and so forth so that's what we're going to do uh, at the end of the video there's going to be a short uh, announcement for anybody who's interested and we'll just go ahead here and I'm going to talk about the oil and supplies. So the, the oil and grease that I use when it's not laying on the floor. <laughs> um, I've used TriFlow Superior Lubricant for a long time. Uh, recommended to me by a very long time um, repair technician and service technician on sewing machines and I just I use it I like it because it has a PTFE kind of like a liquid Teflon that's supposed to help prevent wear of the metal parts but in my opinion there's nothing wrong with regular sewing machine oil too if you'd like to use that I mentioned before I've seen some very old Singer sewing machines that are in really good shape and the family said oh we just always bought Singer oil and there's other brands too so uh, those are the two oils that I use and let me pick up this grease and I'll show you that the grease that I use, if the machine calls for using grease, I use the TriFlow Clear Synthetic Grease. And I've been very happy with it. I uh, have cleaned a lot of machines that had black sticky stuff on there. And hard black stuff and white, very hard stuff that somebody told me was lithium and uh, this was recommended to me and I like it so that's what I use uh, for any grease and it's uh, safe for most plastics too uh, for those of you that feel you want to grease plastic gears in machines and stuff uh, you wouldn't have a problem using that okay and then for supplies it's you don't you don't need much when you're going to uh, oil uh, a machine like this uh, a standard uh, flat blade screwdriver will get, uh, you know, that'll get uh, the covers off for you, no problem. And I like a lint brush to brush off parts before I oil them. I often use a stiff little acrylic paintbrush, just a cheap one to apply the grease. I use some kind of a cloth, what I just call it an oil rag, to wipe up any excess uh, grease that I uh, spill or overflow, overflow when I'm uh, applying lubricants. And I like to use a fiber, a microfiber towel to wipe down the machine when I'm all done. So if I get any little greasy, dirty fingerprints around on it and stuff like that, 
uh, I like to use that to, to clean off the exterior and wipe it down. And then sometimes uh, I'm going to use an old toothbrush when I want to remove old grease. Um, I'm, I'm a big believer in not over lubricating things and uh, you know I've cleaned machines that where they have put grease on gears and stuff they just put grease and grease and grease and grease and grease so I often use a little toothbrush to kinda wipe off or brush off as much of the old stuff as I can get to before I put the new grease so those are the uh, basic things you need not too much like I said so um, I'm gonna I'll, I'll start here uh, just explaining real quick how to take off the covers of this machine if you've never done that okay for safety's uh, sake be before you uh, take covers off the machine or, or work on it uh, very much um, just go ahead and uh, unplug it from the wall and on this machine I also unplug the cord from the machine itself because I'm going to be turning the machine around and I just figured out it won't be in my way and uh, please unplug the machine when you're doing stuff I had an email about a month ago from a guy who was simply uh, putting in a new needle and uh, his dog came in to see him all excited and stepped on his foot pedal <laughs> and he sewed a couple stitches on the side of his finger <laughs> ouch <laughs> yeah so uh, you know like this machine has an on off switch so changing the needle I would just turn it off but some don't some don't some when you plug it in everything's ready to go so just just be real safe okay uh, covers, I usually start with the nose cover or end cover here. And uh, this one, this, you know, sits, sits right up there like that. And it has a thumb nut that uh, holds it on. So if you remove that thumb nut, you can just pull the cover right off the front. Okay. Then I go up to the arm cover up on the top here and uh, just sits over the pressure dial like that sits right up there and it's got two screws kind of hefty top screws I call them like this one towards the front one's back by the hand wheel remove those screws and then this arm cover will lift straight up and off just like that okay um, now in the singer manuals this is not uh, required but this is one of those places that I do a couple spots that aren't really in the in the manual and it's back behind the arm and cover more commonly called the motor cover because the motor sits right in there it sits just up there like that and it has two screws that you remove and when that's done you can remove this metal cover and just notice that one screw is shorter than the other and the short one uh, goes down here through the receptacle area uh, so it's shorter because it screws in here and the top screw is a little bit longer because it has to go in deeper and screw in back there okay and then um, I'm gonna come around here and lay the machine on its back and uh, we'll do the bottom cover or the bottom plate and it looks like this this is what it looks like there's a little uh, screw head 
screw that's, that sits right there, it slips onto. And then there's a felt washer that goes on there. And then you've got some kind of a nut. This is a what's called a flat nut or a washer nut. You can see the little slot there on the left side of it. That's to put a screwdriver in and turn this off. You might also have a bigger, fatter thumb nut. But whatever you've got, you remove the nut, you remove the washer, and then there's usually a little space at one of the corners you can get in there and pull that off of that little screw right there and uh, take that off. Now at this point, when I take this off, I, I already happened to clean this the other day, but when I take this off, I put it over the bench or a paper or plastic and I just take a, a limp brush and brush off because you'll, you'll find dust and threads and uh, thread lint and uh, little lint balls and everything in here. So just go ahead at this time when you're going to be doing the, the lubricating and, and clean that off so when you're done you'll be ready to put it right back on. Okay, and that's about it for the covers. There is the bobbin cover slide plate and the needle plate, but I'm going to show you how to do those when we get to that area. Okay. We are going to oil the nose area now, and there's eight places that you apply oil. And I hope I'll be able to film this uh, satisfactory for you. Uh, some of these oil spots is why I like this triflow with this little skinny tube that I can bend into place and be precise with the oil. But Back here is the anchor of the take-up lever, and it loops on a hinge stud right up there. And we want to get a drop of oil on the top of that so that it will seep in between the metal pieces and get on that hinge stud. Okay. Then the next item is as I turn the hand wheel you'll see this um, kind of hinge area of the take up lever pop up nice and high and that's an easy one to get a drop of oil right between the two pieces there mm -hmm. and you really just need a drop you know if you're if you're if you pull this machine out of a storeroom or garage or basement that hasn't been used in 20 years you're probably going to put more than a drop you know but in normal circumstances that's all you need is a drop now this next one's a little tricky here because this is where the parts of this connect to the uh, front of this shaft and the counterbalance and there's a part there that comes out and connects to this and connects to the needle bar and it's called the needle bar connecting link and there's actually a little hole in there that if you turn turn this just right you can see a shiny silver hole in the darker metal of the connecting link. Whoa, that wasn't good. Got my big thumb in the way there. Right there is a little hole. I wonder if I can zoom in. Oh, I can. I don't think I've done much zooming when I've been recording. <laughs> How about that after all these years to find out, huh? So I'm just going to go right in there and put a drop on that. Whoops. I got a drop that missed. 
there we go. If I didn't have the flashlight, I could hold the tip of this tube with with my left hand and squeeze the bottle with the right hand and direct it more. Okay. Now let me turn this around and reposition to give you a better view of the other five oil locations. Okay, I'm just going to try and hold the front of the machine up with my hand here. But this is the pressure bar going through the pressure bar bushing. And we want to put a drop of oil there to lubricate that bushing so your pressure bar movement's nice and smooth. In the center of the machine, of course, is the needle bar. And it goes through a top bushing, whoop, top bushing and a bottom bushing. So we need a drop of oil just above both of those bushings. Boom, boom. Okay. Now, we this is the uh, vibrating bracket that uh, s moves the needle bar during uh, zigzag. And you see down at the bottom here, there's kind of there's a tension spring right there. And just below that spring, we're going to put a drop of oil there. And then up above the center connection for the bracket that holds the needle bar, we're going to put a drop up there. So one, two, three, four, five. Plus the three, plus the, plus the three up at the top here. Okay. And uh, you go ahead and uh, go ahead and uh, turn the hand wheel. Kind of work that in there. Don't worry about cleaning up the drip spills right now, because we're going to. Uh, Kind of oil the whole machine and run it and then after that we'll go around and wipe up any excess oil that we see okay so now i'm going to get ready for the top the arm the top arm of the machine okay we're going to oil and grease the arm the top arm the horizontal arm <laughs> and I'm, I'm on the back side of the machine to show you this uh, gear that is in the main shaft that interfaces with the pattern selector and the base of the of the cam stack and that needs some lubrication okay and let's see if I can point it out to you there. Worm gear, sometimes this is called. See it there? See those shiny circles? <laughs> That's a gear down there. Okay. And if you want to, uh, if you if you move the stitch width lever on the on the, uh, whoops, where is it? If you move the yeah here it is you can you can get different access and different looks at it okay maybe that's a better look you can see the whole thing and by the movement the grease tends to gravitate towards the nose end of the machine but this is where I, I and this one's tough to get to but this is where I like to I'm gonna to have to I'm gonna to have to move that back a little bit to get the angle on this. This is where I'd like to stick a, a toothbrush in there and press hard against that um, uh, worm gear while I turn the hand wheel back and forth and just try and get any excess stuff that I can off of there. Okay, and I'm going to pull it out there, and we did pretty good. We got some of the old gunk off of there. So, this is where we're going to uh, now be using our uh, clear synthetic grease. 
and maybe you can see why I like to use a brush. Now, if you can, if you can, uh, you know, if you can get in there with your finger and wipe a little grease on there, then you don't need a brush for this one. But, um, and you don't need a lot of grease for this. Don't slather this thing up, you know, with an ounce of grease or something. Um, let me, let me show you. Even in the, in the manual, they show the tube of the old lubricant with this little, you know, it's like a tiny toothpaste tube, and it's got a little squirt of toothpaste coming out. And, uh, see that? That's a ton of grease for that gear. <laughs> and, uh, I'm just going to go in and try and, try and start it up on the hand wheel end and move it a little bit towards the nose and just kind of try and wipe it into those grooves. Okay, then I'll turn the hand wheel and that, that'll get distributed and transferred. See, it's already, look, just one full rotation, it's already moved to the end of the gear here. <laughs> That's why I tend to put it a little heavier on the hand wheel side of that, because I know it's going to migrate towards the nose end pretty quickly. There we go. And that's just going to get it distributed and transfer it to the the gear on the other end there okay okay now I did the grease first and when I have a what I call combination lubrication area where you're gonna put some oil and you're gonna put some grease I always do the grease first because if you get the tiniest drop of oil where you want to put grease, you won't be able to get the grease to stick. <laughs> it just won't stick. So always put your grease on first to be sure that you make good contact with what you're greasing, which is usually a gear or some kind of a slide. Okay. Now, for the rest of the arm here, there's four places. And I'll just I'll just point them out real quick. This is to the bushing for the front of the arm shaft. See that nice big hole? This is for the screw. Don't put oil in there. <laughs> and put drops right in there. And then at the other end, it's down here. Next to this is the little arm that that uh, moves the bobbin winder tire over but right right there is the back bushing or bearing for for the arm shaft and then here's the elliptical for the feed the other feed rock shaft see that one two three and the front up here that's four okay so Now see, this is what I was telling you about, how I like this because I don't have to tilt it and get the oil going. I can put the tip right in there, and then I can tilt it up. I can see the oil going down in there, and just, I didn't even have to squeeze it. See that? Okay, then here you just put a drop right up on top of that elliptical. And then in here, I usually put a couple in the main arm bushings because some of the manuals even show that like three drops one 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 drop one drop and for the bushing three drops and it's it's it holds a lot so don't don't feel shy if you get more than one in there and uh, if, if you're taking a machine out of months or years of storage and it's frozen those two are the first things you should oil because <laughs> that you know it holds more oil but it gets in there then and it gets dry and just like glues the shaft to the bearing 
<laughs> so that's that's uh, usually where the machines are frozen. Okay, so we did it. One, two, three, four, and the grease back on the worm gear. Okay, so let me set up here, and then we're going to do the uh, bushing for the vertical shaft, the upright shaft. To lubricate the upright or vertical shaft, there's two lubrication points. One right here, kind of hiding next to the panel. A little hole up there. And one down here. This is, of course, for the upper bushing, and this would be for the lower bushing. Okay? And you can't really tell how many drops you got to put in there, but you want to be sure and lubricate it. And if you look at this uh, tube, it goes way in there. See how, see how far that goes in to get to get to the bushing. <laughs> it goes in there pretty far, right? So uh, we'll just go ahead and put it in till we. Feel it hit, and then we're just gonna. I just kind of go like that with the bottle, <laughs> and uh, you can. I, I have friends that squeeze that until it squirts out, but uh, I think that's overdoing it myself. But uh, this this one is not really a one drop, in my opinion. Now this one doesn't go in as far, but still pretty far. So I'm just going to stick it in and give it a squirt like that. And then I'll turn the hand wheel again. Now if you don't have, if you do, if you do not have one of these little uh, tubes, like applicator tubes on there, and you've got this, the way I would do it would be to, uh, you know, this one you can do in a normal position pretty good, especially if your oil is not just full, you know. You can get it in there and put a few drops, and it'll run down in there. For this upright one, I, I would probably tilt it back and then get, get the... Is that, is that even on camera? Yeah. <laughs> And get the tip of that in there and tilt it up and give it a squirt. Okay? If you don't have one of those uh, tubes for your oil. Alright. Good progress. Just two. That's that's it. Now, uh, don't you don't need any oil in, over here. Uh, these are for different attachments like seam guides and stuff like that. There's, there's nothing... To oil. I think if we go over here and look underneath here and look up, you can see daylight through <laughs> through the screw holes right there. Okay. And the other thing is, if you have good eyes and enough light, if you if you look into those two holes there, you'll see screw threads. You'll see threads for the screws. So that's a big indicator too. So now I'm going to set up and we're going to do the hook. We're going to lubricate the hook. Okay. Okay, this is about oiling the hook shaft and the race, the R-A-C-E of the hook. Um, and I suggest that when you, when you do this, that you do some dusting <laughs> and, <laughs> and maintenance here. So lift up your presser foot, get it up. Of course, have your needle out. Take your needle out and uh, lift up your needle plate and slide it off. Okay. And uh, see if I can get it. 
Get a little light up there, maybe. I don't know. This light's so weird. Um, we want to. Can can you see it good without? No, it's in the shadow, isn't it? How about all this way? How about this way? Yeah. Okay. Shoot. Um, I like to take the bobbin case out also, okay, and to do that you look up on the positioning bracket has a little tab on this end right there. You can lift it up with a thumbnail maybe and push it up and it just kind of pops up off of a screw and moves to the right a little bit, about an eighth of an inch. That frees up the tension on the bobbin case so you can just kind of twist it counterclockwise a little bit and it'll come off the race. And I should have I should have told you to raise the needle, which will raise the feed dog so that it will come off of there. Okay? And then the area to clean here is, is these little slots right there that go on the race because you can get lint and muck impacted there. You can scrape it out with a toothpick or brush it out with a nice nylon brush or something. Okay, you can inspect your bobbin case, see how it is. Then we kind of come down here and this is where we want to uh, brush off, take your lint brush or a toothbrush or uh, my wife likes to get her hair dryer out and just blow, not hot air, just blow cooler warm air in here and kind of blow all the dust out of here. But this is an opportunity for you to kind of clean up a little bit and uh, now the manual says that there's two places to oil how, how are we looking with that still yeah there's two places to oil down here but I oil threes I tilt this up is it gonna actually that that might that might actually let me see if I can set my old wood block here back here a little bit okay so I oil three places but let's do the official places you see that hole right right there that this is the hook see this big round thing that, that goes around that's the hook that's the actual hook and right there very sharp poke a hole in your finger is the point of the hook and that's what snags the needle thread when it goes by behind the needle and whoop, grabs it. In the center of the base of the hook is a hole for you to oil to go down and it goes through a hollow part of the hook shaft and leaks out a little hole in the side of the hook shaft to lubricate the hook shaft bushing okay so if you got some dry squeaky sounds in there and you've never oiled that that's probably why and again this is just just a drop or two and you just put go right into that hole in the center and move around your camera and light and everything <laughs> and just put a drop or two of oil in there see that okay and then we'll just turn the hand wheel a little bit to get it in there right okay now the other official thing is the race on the hook and the race this is this round thing is is the hook right well, on the inside of that metal, there's it drops down a little bit, and there's this little tiny shelf 
like maybe a 30 seconds of an inch wide that goes around the inside and that's the race and when you put in when you put in the bobbin case um, eh, those slots are what go on to the race so that the hook can race around the bobbin case <laughs> okay so that little shelf is where you want to get a drop of oil and if you've got a squeaky jumpy knocking bobbin case it can be because that race and this slot is really dry because you didn't even know you're supposed to do that <laughs> so uh, I'm going to put this back in. I'll show you where they say to uh, race it. See this little uh, where they where they say to oil the race. This is this is kind of a little hook area here uh, with the needle bar up, which will raise the feed bar uh, the feed dog up. Back in here is a little bracket with a little post sticking up, and the idea is you get that post slide this into the post is there on the post and then you just kind of move it sideways and slip it onto that little race okay of course you have to have your bracket back out of the way you have to you have to have that uh, bracket back and then we'll just see if we can put it in there get that edge up on the post area and then now see you, when, when you put it in there you, you got to put it flat to the hook right you can't you can't go in at an angle like that or pointing up or down once you get on that little post area in there you want to keep the hook the bobbin case flat and then just like that can you see that just slip it right onto that race okay then if you want to check very carefully put your finger in there and apply a little pressure against the inside of the hook and turn see that turn and if it doesn't jump jump all around and try and come out you're on the race then we can just put the uh, the positioning bracket back up and over and snap it in place there and we'll try it again okay Whee. so where where they talk about is you see the 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 oh, this is, I don't know if this is so good here now let me get this out of here and see Mm-hmm. Shadow, shadow everywhere. Okay, let's go let's see. Mm. How about this. Okay, that's gonna that's gonna have to do guys, sorry. This little part of the bobbin case we're gonna call the heel. Okay? See the silver heel comes down? This is the positioning bracket, and this little pointy thing on there is the positioning bracket spring. Okay, and there's this little rectangular space between the spring and the bracket. Right there, and if you look in there, you can see the race. And that's where they say to put a drop of oil. Okay. And let's see, right, right there. Um, boink. Okay. And then go ahead and turn your, oops, turn your hand wheel, get the hook going here. Now I have often, uh, 
just gone right here on the edge of the hook and the bobbin case and put a drop of oil there and just kind of gone like that and it, it seeps in in my opinion now somebody told me no they want you to do it here because this is too close to the thread and it could jump onto the thread and get oil on your fabric and oh my goodness but we go back and we wipe up our excess stuff so I don't think that's a problem myself so if you wanted to put a drop just where that bobbin case sits onto the race right there and let it run in a little bit and see it's already gone really it's already sunk in there okay now the uh, unofficial <laughs> uh, th this is what holds the the needle plate down kind of secures it clamps it down okay and if you look underneath it's just like a post with this round thing on the top but there's a spring around the post and a uh, cotter pin I believe it's what it's called a cotter pin so that when when you push it up on the needle plate and stick it in there and make it flat that spring pushes this down to hold it but this one was so dry and stuff that when we took the needle plate out it just stayed up <laughs> so what I do is just use a little screwdriver there and just pry it up so I can see the post underneath going into the hole okay and then I'm go I put a drop or two of oil whoops, right there mm -hmm. and then oh gee I wish you could feel through video huh because it lifted up a lot easier now seeing how nice it snaps down now yeah okay so with the with the uh, uh, needle needle bar up I'm going to stick this back in here press her foot up by sliding it over the feed dog and getting it wedged under that clamp and then letting it go and letting it sit in there real good Whee. so that's it two official and one little official unofficial now still got some stuff going on here <laughs> so I'm going to set up and we're going to come back and we're going to lubricate the bottom of the machine We're now going to lubricate the bottom of the machine. And we're going to start that lubrication with the one place on the bottom that Singer says to put grease. And before I flip the machine to do that, I'm going to uh, turn this dial. This is the uh, feed dog control height control I guess I'd call it there's a uh, three settings on it R for regular fabrics and see if I can come in on the other side of the camera and I'm gonna turn it clockwise to F F is for finer fabrics and what that does is it partially lowers the feed dog uh, when you're sewing thin and finer fabrics the idea that you don't uh, get teeth marks or damage the finer fabric and if we continue clockwise we come to the third which is uh, D for 
darning. I don't know if people still darn. Maybe, maybe today this would be better as free motion sewing. But I want to set it on the D to give the best access to where they say to put the grease. So I'm going to set up for that now. Okay. So what I did, I turned the machine upside down. Under the, under the nose end, I've got a, a short pile of towels to protect the selector dial for the presser bar pressure. And back towards the hand wheel end, I put my block of wood to, to keep the machine level and sta stable. And what the place I'm going to grease is, is if you, if you see this kind of dog leg bar here, and this right here, this, this moves back and forth and raises the feed dog bar, raises or lowers it, okay, and this kind of piston or pin goes in and out of that housing and this is what they say to lubricate with grease not oil so uh, what kind of threw me was in the service manual it says to oil it with molybdenum disulfide grease Whew molybdenum disulfide M O L Y B D E N U M disulfide so that was a new one on me and I had to look it up and I found one seller of it <laughs> uh, and, and I bought this little tube of it to see what it was and it's kind of a lithium based so I thought okay I'm you know I'm gonna give it a try here and I ordered it and it came and I opened it up and I said oh no because look at this let me get a little bit out here <laughs> notice I got gloves on <laughs> so it is a thick uh, tacky black kind of like a liquid uh, tar <laughs> and I have seen similar colored grease that I, I didn't know the source of on other machines usually on steel gears and man it was a mess to clean off so that's what they say to use and I'm not sure why they said to use that over their Singer lubricant. I don't know. But I tell you what, I am not putting this on any of my machines. <laughs> Sorry. I'll put a link, if I, if I can remember where I bought it, I'll put a link to it uh, if you want to use it. Or maybe you know about it already. But I just, I'm just not going to use it on on uh, any of my machines. This was a half ounce or 15 milliliter tube. I think it was like five or six bucks. And the brand is Thackeray. And like I said, I'll, I'll try and go back and, and uh, remember where I ordered that from. So, uh, let me get this glove off and I'll recap that grease before it does something uh, weird like spread all over my work area here. And then we'll get on with grease in the bottom of this. So uh, instead of that black sticky stuff, I'm just going to use the, my kind of go-to grease, which is the clear synthetic grease from, from uh, Triflow. And I'm just going to put some on my fingertip and try and rub it around that little pin. I guess I call it a piston because it goes into like a cylinder. So I'm just going to get a touch of that on there because it's a, it's a very 
tight fit into into this housing and uh, I mean it shows to get it on the tip you can't it's all sealed and this is as far back as I can make it go and uh, if I'll turn it back I'll turn that knob back the other way and the tip of it barely comes out the end back in here but uh, let me spread this around a little bit try and get the sides at least can't get my finger in there to the bottom very well but uh, let's see if I can turn that knob now and uh, there did you see it go in so that's the fine fabric setting and then this is the regular where it goes in as far as it goes let me see how much of that tip is sticking out well about a half inch I would say is is sticking out over here so instead of my finger at the beginning I probably should have just used this brush see if I can get a little bit on there and get that on the tip of that pin and they must have used that black stuff at the factory because the tip is a little dark looking okay left a little bit of darkness on my brush here let's see if I can turn that back and forth some more well when I got this machine it would barely turn out I'm turning it upside down so it's hard to grip on that but it is turning a little bit easier I could hardly even turn this uh, knob up there and I am going to they don't say to do this but right up there is the underside of the knob that kind of moves that bracket back and forth and I'm going to put a drop of oil in there you'll see it if you look up there Let's put a drop of oil on that they don't like I said they don't mention about doing that so there is my grease for the feed dog uh, lifting and lowering mechanism so I'm going to go now to the other regular places the oil back here and there's let me think one two three four five six seven eight kind of four on each side here and the first one is up here at the little bushing right here see that showing up yeah right there and then in this in this housing with the adjustment screw there is a little hole on the top of that and we know that that is to put oil in there instead of on the uh, whoop, come here you there we go in the hole give it a squeeze um, next is down here just below the side of the pulley and there's another connection like this from the other shaft that goes up and it also has a little hole in the top of it so I'm gonna get my little straw at that hole there we go and give it little drop in there okay and then the last one it's just like this one up here it's just the hinge screw that goes into the uh, lifting bar so where that goes in there we're going to give it a drop of oil just like that Okay. 
go ahead and do a little bit of hand wheel turning and then move around here and let's get to this other side so we can see we have uh, up here at the top the other end of that shaft we just did this hinge screw or hinge pin down here at this hinge same kind of thing you'll see right here next to the hook pulley and below the belt you'll see these two little round pieces come up I call it the figure eight and that uh, if you watch that while I turn the hand wheel that kind of the hinges and stuff there so you put a drop of oil right where those the center of the figure eight I call it don't get any on the belt okay don't get any oil on the belt come on you there's a good drop now the last one if you saw in the diagram at the beginning of this from what I can tell is this separation or this joint where this piece of metal and this piece of metal meet and that uh, piston kind of goes through the top but if you saw on that diagram there's a big black line here and I took that to mean that that's where the oil goes so I'm gonna run some oil along there and that does move um, those pieces do move against each other and rub against each other so it makes sense to me that they not much but they do so I've got all eight places now right I did one two three four and then I did one two three and four okay so I think I'm good to go so I'm going to reposition the machine and stand it up now I know that I talked about when you're all done oiling to go back and wipe up you know like I got some excess oil right there see and we want to wipe all that up but not yet there's something that you really should do before you do that and I'll show you that in the next chapter okay uh, what what is good for you to do when you do a, a complete oiling like that is to run the machine and let all that oil get worked in and rubbed onto the parts and so forth and uh, the, the other thing about that is if there's excess oil you know like down here you squeeze a little too hard and instead of two or three drops you put 20 or 30 <laughs> it might throw some oil out the bottom of the machine so before we wipe up the excess oil and everything you, you want to run the machine so if you if you use your machine here and there throughout the year and you do what I just did you know a couple times a year running the machine for about two to three minutes should be enough if this if you haven't used the machine in like six months or a year and you do this you'd be better off to run the machine about five minutes okay and you just want to run it you don't need to run it full blast especially at the beginning but at least run it at a moderate speed and just run it for you know depending on you say two to five minutes okay so I'll turn it on we'll run it kinda like that okay that was my my three minutes there so, pretty easy to do. Let me unplug the cord so I can move it around. 
and uh, I'm going to get my oil cloth or my rag. An old t-shirt, piece of t-shirt works real good with this cotton because it's absorbent, you know. I just buy these coming like three or four to a pack at the dollar store. So, And I'll go around and wipe up stuff. And if there's oil that I see in places that I can't get my rag or finger to, I forgot to mention uh, one of the other part of the supply would be these cotton buds as my wife calls them I call them q-tips and sometimes you need those especially in the nose area so I'm just going to go in and look in there I don't see a bunch of oil spilled all over a little there a little there okay and I'm going to uh, Turn this back up on the bottom here and here I do have some oil a little bit of excess oil I don't want that to be thrown around the machine or on the belt uh, you know excess oil like that just collects dust and dirt and gets mucky so no reason for that and let's go up here and I'll look in the nose because that area is often has a little bit of excess. I don't see much really. What you want to look for is down at the bottom of the nose because when you're up here oiling this stuff the oil runs down and it can collect down in the bottom there. And when I've taken these machines apart to clean them, you know, the presser bar and the needle bar and bracket and stuff, boy, there can be a pretty thick little puddle of <laughs> old gunky stuff down there. And sometimes it starts affecting the uh, tension pin release lever that's down there. When you lift that up, there's a little kind of U-shaped lever that pushes on the tension pin to open and close the tension and uh, that can be restricted so if you got some down deep in there that's when you can go in with your uh, uh, you know q-tip and get in there and get out anything that you see down there okay then lastly <clears throat> uh, I'm going to take a look at the bobbin case and the hook area because if I got some oil on that hook I don't want it thrown around there and uh, matter of fact I'm just going to put the cloth on the edge of the hook watching out for the point and gently press on the cloth while I rotate the hook to, to get off any excess and then the same thing in the center where I oiled that hole down there and I guess that's it top bottom nose um, now I'm gonna set up here and I'm gonna do one more lubrication area this is not recommended by anybody from Singer this is just me and this is just a little bonus if you want to do it let me set up for it okay so some of you might have wondered from the beginning why why did he take the motor cover plate off you know there's nothing back there that you oil and and that's true you, you don't ever oil the motor or the pulley or anything like that right but um, I haven't done a lot of machines with this kind of dial and push button reverse but I don't know if you remember or if you've seen this whole series but this would barely barely go in and out and uh, when I first got the machine and stuff and I talked to a friend about that and he told me what he does <clears throat> 
he told me what he does is there's a couple of places here that he puts a little bit of grease. One, I'm, it's going to be very hard to show you, but if you look at this, you'll see a kind of teardrop shaped bracket that comes off of this post, around this post, and goes up around a second post in there. Okay, and that uh, up up at the inside there has a hole in it that when you turn your stitch length takes that center cylinder twist in and out of that hole in this teardrop sh sh thing. And that's one place he greases is the outside of that cylinder. And the other place he greases is uh, connecting these posts together is kind of like a fork and the fork slides along this post. So he greases this post and he greases the outside of the cylinder up there and he said that just helps it move a little easier in his opinion and uh, so I'm, I'm going to uh, I'm going to try it. What I did was uh, I turned the dial in the front there to six, the longest stitch, and I took a can of PB Blaster silicone and right on the top of the reverse button and went like <laughs> a little tiny squirt in there and then started exercising it and it just got easier and easier and easier and that's how I got this thing free and it also helped with turning the dial a little bit okay but uh, so what I'm gonna do is turn this dial to zero uh, stitch length so that this fork is all the way out and the cylinder is all the way out okay and then I'm gonna put a little bit of grease on my grease brush I guess we'll call it and then I'm, I'll show you hopefully you'll be able to see you get some grease on here you get I'm gonna put grease on both sides of it so I only have to grease the brush up once. I don't think this is going to take a lot of grease at all. I wonder if I can move this whole setup closer here. Ouch. Mm hmm. Hmm be able to help you see it a little bit so I'm gonna go in on that cylinder and just paint it back and forth and then I'm going to paint this pin that the fork slides on paint it with grease so to speak okay and then I'm going to turn the stitch length back all the way. Oh, wow. I already noticed the difference. Huh. That's impressive. No wonder he does this. Now, I, instead of turning it to uh, six, I'm going to turn it about in the middle, which is going to expose kind of the, the side of the cylinder that I didn't get any grease on before. And now I can get grease on that side. Of course, don't want any grease on your belt, right? <laughs> don't don't be don't be emailing me and say, man, I did that grease thing you told me to, and now my motor only goes at half speed because <laughs> your belt's slipping. <laughs> so be careful. Just take your time. 
once a year ought to do this pretty good. There we go. I think that's worth the effort. I really, I really do. Because this, these, I never like these dial push button things too much compared to the old stitch length reverse lever. Just you know, it was a very uncomplicated system and stuff. But if you have this machine, and it, it's a, it's a decent machine. It's a good machine, you know. But you might as well make it uh, easier on yourself to use those controls. There we go. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm very satisfied with that. That was a great idea. I'll have to let them know. And uh, finally now, the last uh, part of this whoop, is going to be to, to put your covers back on. And then when your covers are back on and everything is set, I take a cloth, I prefer microfiber, but any soft cloth, and you want to wipe down the machine. And if you want to use a barely damp cloth, <clears throat> that's fine. With this kind of paint they were using by this time at Singer, it was different than the black finish and the beige slantomatics. And you just want to go around and wipe off. Mostly what you're doing is removing your oily little fingerprints <laughs> from everywhere that you touch the machine while you were manipulating it around to do some of this. You know, so it's very easy. It just takes about a minute or two to wipe down the whole machine. And like I said, if you want to uh, get part of your cloth wet and squeeze it out so it's almost dry and do that side of the cloth first then grab the other end and dry it you know that's fine but that's the whole goal is just to wipe off everything with the machine on the outside so just imagine this now with all the covers on I'm not going to bore you with putting those back on but just, just think now, you have such a nice, smooth running machine that's cleaned up and it's pretty and it's ready to sew your next product uh, project for you. Hey, okay, so that's the end of the little bonus uh, section. And uh, stay tuned for a small announcement before the end of the video, if you're interested. That's very optional. Okay, so my, my little announcement here is just that uh, uh, the doctors had me doing some more tests earlier than they planned because they ran some of the test results by a group of doctors who didn't like what they saw. So I've had some testing done. I have some more to do this week. And then about uh, a week or so from now, I start some new treatments. And I, I have to say, uh, I... I really like my doctor uh, from the beginning I just told them hey you know just hit me with the truth tell me be as honest as you can and I'll deal with it and uh, he has been that way and I, I have to admire this guy he's been doing this about 25 years and he's got a great sense of humor and for 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 what he deals with every day I'm not sure how he does it, but, and he always, he always just laid it right on me, you know, but uh, we've always found some humor in our conversations and stuff. So when I went to consult with him, when all this started, and uh, he was telling me about this, you know, of course, I'm disappointed. I'm, I'm disappointed as hell. I can't, I can't tell you, <sighs> but, uh, you know, he's fighting on and I'm fighting on. But I asked him, you know, these new treatments, you haven't said a whole lot. Um, you know, what do you want to tell me about these new treatments, quote unquote? And he says, well, we're still developing a full course of treatments, but I said, well, give me some idea. And he says, well, okay. Um, 
I can tell you that these new treatments aren't going to be as much fun as the previous treatments you've had. <laughs> so, uh, you see what I mean? <laughs> I, and I thought, oh man, if, if my previous treatments were fun, what am I in for? Oh my goodness. Okay, so, um, long story, I'll shorten it up here. I, I, I'm not going to be doing as many videos as I had planned to do with this 466, you know, stripping it down and washing it and stuff like that. It's very usable now. It's clean and, and uh, sewing well, and uh, I'm happy with that. I'll find somebody to give it to, and uh, but I'm not going to be able to do as many. I hope I can do one more that's just how to wind the bobbin and, bobbin and thread the needle because that's uh, I always get requests for that and it was like the oiling and the presser bar you know I get a lot of requests for those and uh, <clears throat> I just figure maybe I should try and make the wind the bobbin thread the needle video uh, while I still can and then that'll finish this series with the 466 and I don't know if or when I'll be making more videos. So, I felt I owed it to my, my uh, longtime viewers and people to just say that. And I, please don't make a big deal about it. Please, you don't have to comment and all that stuff. It, you know, it is what it is. And uh, everybody's going to do the best they can. So, with that, that's going to be the end of this. And thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, saving and keeping these old singers in service. Always appreciate that. And you take care.